Welcome to LARP Academia. Today we're going to talk about the final level of monsters, the final options that you're able to choose in any standard battle game, if the game designer allows, of course. Now, this monster is the animation. The animation is pretty powerful. Let's not, let's not, let's just not sugarcoat it. It's a bit annoying to grab up for, but it it is very powerful. You get four points of natural ancestral everywhere. You are able to wield medium shields, like all melee. You go out there in fight, and you are strong as well with a bunch of immunities, some strange versions, but you are slow. That's really the only negative, is that you are slow. It's a little bit of a pain to grab up for, and it doesn't have anything more than just in melee. It doesn't have a fireball like a fire giant does in order to break people's shields. While it is strong, a hardened shield will still be a problem. You just have four points of natural ancestral, which is, oh, it's ridiculous. And an animation is a very strong option for you to choose. And a very, very problematic monster to face when, when any other melee is encountering it. But aside from that, it's just, it doesn't have any versatility. It's not the best in what it does. It's very good but it is an interesting monster for you to really consider. Now, an interesting monster roleplay, but sadly we're not covering roleplay, we're going over the power in what, in what the monster manual would have, is the Banshee. Now, the Banshee, some would think, is the upgraded version of the Ghost. Those people aren't as informed as they would like to be. See, a Banshee is incorporeal and can manifest just like a ghost can, but the Banshee is more about killing rather than dispelling, which is what a ghost is. A ghost is dispelling, a Banshee is killing. A Banshee has two fingers of death per life. Pretty good, pretty good. But they don't die a lot, so that's not as good. However, they have terror, which is once per life charge times five. They can wield natural daggers for whatever reason. And... Um... Yeah, there, there's nothing else really that they can do. So they can pop out, they can kill twice, they can terror, and then they can... Go back. I mean, Terror Charge Times 5 would be more of a ghost thing, while Banshees would be more about killing, maybe a, maybe a, I don't know, a wounding or a ravage, something that would be more about killing people, or I guess the terror because it terrifies people, sort of. But overall, you do your two fingers of death, and then you have terror that you can pop out and do, and you're essentially a ghost that can't dispel. Your option is just to terror people. Um, that's not very good, honestly. There's not much that you have. There's not much that's really worthwhile in your kit. I mean, yeah, there's some other stuff that who cares? They're not important. What's important is you coming out and then doing things to people. And it's just, it's not, it's not an impressive kit at all for a Banshee. I'm sorry. It's just how it is. Now, the Celestial Avenger is... <sighs> It's interesting. You have no armor, which is already very bad to start with, but you are able to wield it to medium shields and all melee, so you're meant to go in and fight without, without any armor. All right, you do have heal, you do have a blessed aura that you're able to do, and you do have awe to keep people away, sort of, and you do have a lot of immunities, in addition to flame blade and the ability to fly away, to charge your blessed aura, but... I mean, you're meant to be a melee fighter, things get messy, things happen from everywhere around, and you have no armor. Once you're hit, you're dead, <laughs> or you're wounded and you have to run away, and it's just, it's not great overall. A Celestial Avenger is for those who say that I have like 7th and 8th Orders of the Warrior, and I want to go and I want to have fun messing with people. And yeah, by that point they could do that with just about any other monster anyways. So a Celestial Avenger, not having armor is pretty huge. and. Uh, Sadly, that brings it down to a, uh, it can have a position if you're really confident in yourself and you're able to do a lot, but it's not very dependable, especially compared to other monsters. Now on to the elementals. Before we go into the elementals, I'm just going to list the elemental altered effects, weird stuff that every elemental will have. You can assume that air, earth, fire, and water have these effects. All right. Cool. All right. So now we get into the air elemental. The air elemental, mm, eh, not very great. It has natural armor, but it doesn't have any weapons or a shield. So it can't really fight. The reason because is since it has a gift of air. Makes sense that an air elemental would have gift of air. The problem, the gift of air, is that let's say I am hit with an arrow. 
Gift of Air triggers, obviously, and my armor loses a point, or loses all its points because, I mean, an arrow. So, you uh, have both effects trigger at the same time, which already makes it a very, eh, to work with natural armor. Aside from this, all you have, all you have is two per life. You can do call lightning, which is pretty good, and a lightning bolt. That's it. That's all you can do as an air elemental. That's it's not very good. You can't fight, you can't even swing, you can't even defend yourself. You're just, oh, I don't have my lightning bolt and I've used my two call lightnings. I'm just gonna go and die. Oh wait, it's very hard for me to die because I have gift of air. Oh. <laughs> so an air elemental is just not, not very impressive or not very fun to even play a lot of the time. It's fun if you're trying to just mess with people, but an air elemental is definitely not the best choice in the world. An Earth Elemental is a little bit different. It has two points of natural invul, not amorphous, I know, kind of weird, and it has natural shorts. Okay, that's pretty good to start with. It also has Entangle, some immunities, Hold Person, and Bear Strength in order to try to break those shields that are non-warrior shields. Now, the Earth Elemental, it's a bit better than an Air Elemental. Obviously, it has weapons that have bare strength. This is kind of better, and it has natural armor that actually does something, since it doesn't get negated by another thing that it has. It can also have some versatility by entangling others and holding people down, and that's kind of where it ends. I mean, an Earth Elemental's not great. I would rather be a Frost Giant, because, or, or, even, or even like a giant spider or something that has the ability to hold people or just... Eh, or, or the ability to freeze people or stop people while being better in melee. And an Earth Elemental is just... It, it's okay. It's not terrible. It's not the worst of the worst. But it's definitely not a preference. Now a Fire Elemental, possibly one of the... Possibly the best Elemental, honestly. Gives you two points of natural armor. And eh, not the best in the world. Natural short swords, okay. Pyrotechnics, Fireball, and Teleport to get out. As well as a bunch of other immunities. Now... This doesn't sound that impressive, but we've already talked about how Fireball is really good with a Fire Giant, and uh, having Pyrotechnics per life means that you're able to actually use it legitimately, instead of just a, I make you stay away, and that's, that's kind of what Pyrotechnics is. Just don't make me use it. I'll play chicken with you and maybe not use it. No, you'll actually use it. You'll be like, hey, I'm going to Pyrotechnics you, and people are like, ah, crap, this is actually a threat instead of a game of chicken. So. That's good. You have a fireball that you're able to use and actually do something with. You're able to use teleport to get out of that. I mean, there's there's more options. It's not great options, but people do like the fire elemental a little bit more than all the other ones just because one, killing killing is good. And two, pyrotechnics is wonderful to have per life. And three, it's the best of a not very good handful of options. Now for the water elemental, you have the ability to shove, have four points, well, let's go over the armor first. You have four points of natural armor, Eremorphous, so it's eh, not the best in the world. And you have access to hinge. I talked about hinge quite a bit in the past, and hinge is not the best option out there. So that already brings it down quite a bit. You are able to shove, let's say it a little bit before, and for an unlimited amount of times, dispel flame blade and pretty much it because it only dispels flame enchantments. So that's not very that's not very good. What else does it have? It's aquatic with some immunities. I mean, at least at least the fire elemental has flame blade, which I forgot to mention. But that is a huge reason why people like the fire elemental. It also has flame blade, so it has armor breaking, shield crushing. You have whippity do flails. It's not it's not very great. For a water elemental, there's not much you can do, and because of that, sadly, water elementals are just not a very good option. Now, an elf is interesting. You're able to wear two points of foreign armor, can have a small shield as long as a bow is not carried with it, and yes, that means you can wield a bow, shorts, and longs, and have some fun with those equipment. But the weird part is in its abilities. Now, I'm going to give a list of what normal elf abilities are. Okay. Just giving you that so you can look at it. And I'm going to give a list of what Dark Elf abilities are. Now, as you can probably already see, 
they're different for sure. The elf is more meant to be a druidic ranger type thing where you can get up to second level druid spells and have fun while a dark elf is meant to more be like an assassination second level wizard. Now unfortunately you're not at third level where you get lightning bolts and some other cool stuff as a wizard but you're still able to get force bolts and some other things for a dark elf. For a druid you get heal, access to other poison and stuff so generally just the normal elf variant's a little bit better. However, it's it's an interesting class. It is extremely versatile, possibly the most versatile sixth level monster out there, but it's not overwhelmingly powerful. And that's kind of what's holding it down. It is a very interesting monster. I like it how it is. I really do. And it's a good option to choose. It's just not an... What? How did this... How did this get past why what why aren't we all playing this it, kind of monster? So an elf, very good option. I would highly recommend to really consider it. And it's just a good monster, solid monster option choice. Now, the Infernal Descendant is the counterpart to the Celestial Avenger, and it differs in a few ways. It's it has no armor, just like the Celestial Avenger. It has access to medium shields and not all melee, only a certain amount of melee. And this is where we start to see where a little problem where it gets worse. Now it has all these other abilities, that's great, but what you'll see as the main difference is instead of these benevolent abilities or these abilities that just help you, like uh, what Blessed Aura would or Heal would, you have the problem where you need to kill someone in order to get your abilities. You have Adrenaline, great. Adrenaline is not as good as heal because you need to one be 10 feet away after killing someone and two It's it's not I mean you can't you can't just get out of battle and then do it after you've Gone through a fight. I mean you haven't necessarily killed that person. So you do not get the adrenaline Maybe that's also for blood and thunder blessed aura. Yeah, pretty great but they're able to put, apply it before battle blood and thunder you need to kill someone back out 10 feet and then say blood and thunder it's <laughs> you're already starting to see the the problems with Infernal Descendant. It's a lesser version of Celestial Avenger, which already wasn't the best, so eh, not the best option in the world. Now the Medusa is where you could have two points of War and Armor or one point of Natural. You're going to take the one point of Natural, always, and we'll go over why, but you can have a single short or a bow. Well, single short and bow. You get the idea. Now, the reason why you'd want the bow is because you have a poison arrow, Tron times three. You also have icy blasts that you can do against other people. You have some immunities and you have regeneration. So if you are hit as an archer, just make sure your bow isn't hit, regenerate, and you're good. Medusa is great at this. It's a wonderful archer. It's not an overwhelmingly powerful archer, but it does have chargeable poison arrows. So oof, it's pretty fun. And it doesn't just restrict it to poison arrow. You can do other things as well. You are able to also icy blast people if they get close. Medusa is a solid option, a very good archer to add to any team. And I would highly recommend that you really consider this if you're thinking of playing an archer. No, the mummy. I mean, who doesn't want to be wrapped up in toilet paper for their garb? It's, it's great. So you go in as a mummy with two points of natural armor, short swords that are natural, a boatload of immunity is regeneration that specifically states will work through the curse state, which you are a curse, and you are slow as well as hard to kill, and it would have to be taken away through flame. This is actually pretty good overall. The mummy is a very good option for considering six level monsters because you're able to keep going, you're able to keep fighting and it's it's a pain to kill it's not as it's not as tanky as a troll not as beefy but it also is able to potentially last almost as long due to its immunities okay a troll might be better but a mummy is still yeah, it's not terrible it's not great it's an okay option now before we get into our last monster for level six do not forget to like subscribe and ding that notification bell so that you can stay informed as to more larp things and more amcar stuff as we eventually come along with it now the last monster is a werewolf oh sucked in the forest too close to hide i'll be punished by the moonlit side that's what you'll be saying to other people to convert them if they're willing since they have to kind of be willing you, you get the idea for for lycanthropy and you can only have three of those at a time but as a werewolf you can start off as a peasant what abilities you have as a peasant? You have, you're a peasant, you have a short sword. What do you freaking do? But at any time, you can don your garb and turn into a werewolf. And you can only be a peasant once for life. I mean, the, the suspicion's kind of gone by then. But you can don your garb and become a werewolf to get two points of natural armor and wield natural short swords. Pretty great. You also have bear strength berserk if you want to use that. Some immunities and 
Some other weird stuff like tracking, steel life, charge times five, and you also have thick skin, so your two points of armor is actually pretty good. And that's it. Werewolf is more of a fun thematic choice, kind of like the vampire was, rather than a, oh, this is a really good option. Like, while a vampire had a lot of conditions, a werewolf is just a, you're not bad, but you're not amazing. Would I choose you? If I was laid out with a bunch of mediocre options, I might choose you, yeah, but you're not, you're not amazing to me. You're not the best in the world, and it's more of a gimmicky role-play uh, role monster, especially with the idea that you could be a peasant and then turn into a werewolf. Like that, That's a complete role-play bit, and that's what this monster is more intended to be. So it's not a very powerful monster. With that, I would love to hear what you thought about Amp Guard Level 6 monsters, or just Amp Guard monsters in general. Which ones do you like the most? Which ones do you like to play? Do you Are you wondering why are Level 6 monsters not that powerful compared to all their other levels? There's been no purple Level 6 monsters. I would love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Until next time, this has been Wizzo, and keep LARPing.